start with these uh, the internet shutdown, right? And the Panama Papers, and which I've concluded after reading everything so far that I've been able to read, which isn't the papers themselves because that's not being released. Uh, that this this whole thing is funded by the establishment. We can trace the money ties. It's funded by problematic people like Pierre Omid, Omidyar and uh, people like our favorite George Soros. And the conglomerate of journalists are mainstream media approved journalists. So all of these events that happened this past week are extremely connected. So let, let's go ahead and, and go through it because, you know, like in the movie B for Vendetta, when he says, you know, I like God do not believe in coincidences. I also do not believe in coincidences. So mid press news had a really great breakdown uh, on a tweet. When this happened, they said global internet services are down potentially as a result of cyber attacks in response to the Pandora papers. Facebook is offline. Instagram is down, WhatsApp, Verizon. You guys remember when this happened. Coinbase was also experiencing errors, which was scary for a lot of the the, the Coinbase Bitcoin people. But uh, Facebook, by the way, was down after the release of the Pandora Papers and after the whistleblower was testifying. So that was interesting. And um, Ben Norton put out this tweet where he talks about what I just said, how the Panama Papers, the ICU, right, which is, or the ICIJ, which is the uh, conglomerate of independent and investigative journalists, which left out all the U.S. politicians, is funded by the CIA front, Ford Foundation, NATO member Norway, Open Society of Billionaire uh, Soros, longtime CIA asset, big tech oligarch Om Omidyar and who is also a close ally of us regime change ops also works with Amazon. And you guys can see the list right here that Oz has on the screen. I'm not going to go over all of it, but you can see that pretty much all those I mentioned are, are there. And, uh, Ben Norton also said that one of the main groups behind the Pandora papers and Panama papers is the top ICU ICIJ org partner, the OCCRP, which is funded by the U.S. State Department, <laughs> the USAID, the NED, NED. the EU, <laughs> the UK, Sweden, Denmark, Billionaire Soros, Billionaire Omid Omidyar, Ford Foundation, and Rockefeller Brothers. So if you've been paying attention to any of these organizations, you know that these organizations are um, NGOs and uh, U.S. backed just nonprofits and, you know, just organizations that usually work on the behalf of the establishment. It's interesting that they're funding a bunch of investigative journalists who found things that really aren't any much different than what we already knew, because we already knew, for instance, that billionaires put money offshore. We already knew that in places like South Dakota and Delaware and certain areas of the United States, businesses can evade taxes. We already knew that the rich pretty much have different rules that apply to them. So all of these things that have been uh, discovered by the Panama Papers, we mostly already knew. And also their focus was on foreigners, foreign, foreign investments, foreign interests, nothing really about US politicians that were that was like heavily involved. And so um, this was coordinated by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, like I said, where over 600 journalists from around the world, including more than 75 from OCCRP's network, spent two years siphoning through nearly three terabytes of documents, which seems like a lot of documents. So Pasta, anything to say on that thus far? No, no, no. I'm just going to let you keep unpacking this and we'll we'll kind of break yeah. it down at the end. I have a lot of things to say, but I'll hold I'll hold on to that for a second. Go ahead. All right. So just more on the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, the ICIJ. Two years ago, Mint Press had an article written by Max Blumenthal and Ben Norton. Um, I believe. Oh, no, sorry. Alex Blu Rubenstein and Max Blumenthal. Yeah. And I'm going to read a little bit about this because it's important into how this plays in and how we've been 
really aware a lot of us paying attention as to how problematic Ryan Grimm's boss is because Pierre Omidyar is one of the most powerful people that gets constantly overlooked in comparison to say somebody like George Soros, right? And he is the eBay founder best known for a sponsorship of The Intercept, which amazing people work for today. Uh, and he, it, you know, he described it, they described it in this uh, article as a progressive publication that possesses the classified documents exfiltrated by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden. Unlike rival Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel, Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, Om Omidyar has mostly managed to keep his influential role in the media below the radar. And Samantha Power, the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and a liberal interventionist guru, we know who she is, has praised Omidyar, who is following in the footsteps of Zoros, like as if that is a good thing, right? <laughs> um, I know. He supports this sort of global cartel of self-styled fact-checking groups that determine which outlets are legitimate and which are fake. That part is extremely important because he has so much say into what is considered, you know, true, just, uh, you know, pioneering type of journalism compared to, you know, what he decides is, is what he has a lot of influence on what uh, what it looks like, just like the mainstream media that can decide what is a verifiable journalistic publication and what is it he also threw his money behind initiatives like the nonprofit backing new knowledge and this is according to the article the data firm that waged one of the most devious disinformation campaigns in any recent american election campaign and is a key backer of the international consortium of investigative journalism the icij the outfit that holds the panama papers and oversees the strategic disinformation dis decimation decimation of that leak trove of financial ties to handpicked journalists. So I want to point that out. He has he has the Panama Papers. He oversees a lot of these sort of quote unquote leaks, but they're only leaked to the journalists that they handpick specifically for whatever they want. It's not for everybody. And that just shows you, well, wait a minute, shouldn't the public and everybody have access to this? Shouldn't Shouldn't uh, other journalists who, you know, this one particular person doesn't know about also have access to this? They they still to this day haven't released The Intercept, all of the documents that Snowden had. And that goes to show you that they're sort of manipulating the the information to coordinate with what the establishment wants. I mean, at least that's what I think, because that's what that if we don't all have access to it, that's what would make yeah. sense. Well, um, you are right because that's the playbook. I just want to say that's you are right. That's what you think. No, that's what you're right because we can just look at history. That is the playbook. And when they're comparing Pierre Odemeyer to a young up-and-coming Soros, we should just be immediately alarmed and alerted because the main mechanism of persuasion or propaganda from the stenographers is to make sure that they control the media. The orange revolution or the color revolution in Ukraine Soros funded a lot of oppositional media companies to get his narrative out. And that's what they're doing over here. When you say they're handpicked, they're handpicked stenographers. They're out there to push the propaganda that we want that they want to push upon us. The only problem is the majority of the people in the mainstream say, look at the important person on television, look where it's coming from, and they listen to it rather than going down this rabbit hole and seeing where the money comes from. Where the money comes from with the, pa the uh, Pandora Papers should tell you everything you need to know. Go ahead, Fee. Exactly. And um, he did this documentary, too, where he was hyping up the journalist helping expose the Panama Papers, and that just makes me suspect. It's like, why is this billionaire that has so much power specifically hyping up certain journalists. And by the way, in the coverage that we're going to go through what The Guardian says, they don't mention WikiLeaks at all. They talk about this particular Pandora Papers being the largest dump since the Panama Papers, excluding WikiLeaks. And we know that Julian Assange is still in jail for exposing U.S. war crimes. And so it's, it's kind of telling to me that they're, you know, patting themselves on the back about this release of the Pandora Papers while simultaneously staying completely numb on, on WikiLeaks and what's happening with Julian Assange, right? So yeah. uh, he also, you, you know, a lot of people when they saw, oh, The Intercept is, is owned 
by this billionaire Pierre Omidyar, they were like, but he's pushing a progressive sort of publication. So let's overlook that. Well, that's how he has kind of made himself out to be this progressive philanthropist. And he, um, he has a lot of like hold with these different organizations all over the world. Here, they mention how his fortune helped found an outlet to propel a destabilizing coup in Ukraine. Pasta right. and I have there, about you there it is. Yeah. He helped also establish a network of oppositional youth activists in Zimbabwe. And in the Philippines, he invested in an oppositional news site that is honing corporate surveillance techniques like a mood meter to capture non-rational reactions. Meanwhile, he partnered closely with the leading arms of U.S. soft power from the U.S. Agency of, of, for International Aid and Development, the USAID, to the National Endowment for Democracy, acting as a conduit for information war style projects in countries, warfare style projects in countries around the world. So um, he also he also began funding the Alliance for Secure and Democracy. This was a project of Bill Crystal, and yeah. it focused on Russian infiltration of social media, kind of promoting that Neo McCarthy, I, you know, oh, Russia is everywhere. And it was called, um, he funded a new online ma magazine called The Bulwark, which is basically like a neocon type of magazine where they were promoting U.S. warfare. So if somebody that's so progressive on one end is funding something like The Intercept, right, that supposedly goes and takes on the establishment and gets all these leaks somehow that, you know, where these journalists get and they're like, look, see, we found that, you know, these billionaires are investing money in this blah, blah, blah. But by the same token, he's funding neocon right wing type of, of, of literature that is propaganda for the U S empire. You should probably, you know, kind of hold that to account. And, yeah. um, he he also uh, had the intercept right, and he recruited the journalists who had Snowden's leaks. Therefore, like I said, privatizing the files. Not only did this delay the release, it denied the public access to the information in order to supply his stable of hired reporters with exclusive scoops that continue to appear years after they were leaked. Here it is from the article again. To this day, only a minuscule percentage of the Snowden files have been made public. And for whatever reason, none of those that have been released relate to eBay or its associated business interests. Yep. Because they cherry picked so, it. Right. They yeah. cherry picked it. They took the yeah, stuff they like, run out that would benefit for them and left the stuff in that was, you know, you, you know the game. We know the game. And this yeah. and the thing is, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to say that this system works. We know this from the progressives that we deal with that you can just come forth and put on a flowery front and say, I'm all about progressive needs, despite your what's going on, you know, behind the scenes and without following the money. People don't do the homework necessary to understand that this is about manipulation, not about reporting actual facts and the news. I'm sorry. Right. No. And they do this to say, look, look at what we're investigating. We're holding people to account. Look how bad things are. But they only yeah. do surface level. So because if they did the whole thing, then their whole agenda would collapse on itself. Right. And yeah. there is the exposing this, themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they can't do that. So um, so First Look Media is one of the organizations, because if, if you go through this article, which I think everybody should refresh and read, um, they talk about all his little organizations and his little projects. One of the the organizations, one of the, the companies he ha has is called First Look Media. This is the main arm for su supporting cutting edge projects produced under his watch, a mid -yard's watch. And besides The Intercept, this company funds a documentary division called Field of Vision that has overseen films about high profile journalists. And I'm going to quote this past productions include risk, a negative portrayal of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange that prompted WikiLeaks lawyers to accuse its director, Laura Poitras, of undermining WikiLeaks, just as the Trump administration has announced that it intends to prosecute its journalists, editors and associates. A field of vision documentary on the Panama Papers function as a PR vehicle for the Omidyar funded international consortium of investigative journalism that holds documents and features journalists like Luke, Luke Harding in its trailer. 
Harding is a Russia-obsessed Guardian correspondent who frequently fabricated a report on meetings between Assange and the former Trump campaign manager, Paul Manafort. First Look also sponsors the for-profit studio Topic, which is producing another film on the Panama Papers, The Laundromat, starring Meryl Streep and Antonio Banderas. I mean, guys, the connections to Hollywood and to yes. uh, this sort of movie-making propaganda that's yes. part it, it, with it's CIA intelligence. It's, it's exactly it what the CIA does. <laughs> it's part of the programming. We could do a movie, fam. I'll play Meryl Streep. You play Antonio Banderas. We'll just reverse the roles. <laughs> and we'll do the, we'll do the laundromat. You're Meryl Streep, and I'm Antonia Banderas. How about that? <laughs> You're Antonia, and I'm Merle. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, yeah, this is all part of it. And you, you mentioned the CIA. This is where it's coming from. It's one arm working together. That's why, you know, we, we think about Hollywood. You go back, you, you look at a lot of movies and you remember the programming. Like I make that joke all the time, but it was on purpose that the actual, you know, uh, the third Rambo had me rooting for the Mujahideen because it had the Russians as the bad person. And all the video games that portray the Russians as the bad people and stuff. This is just, just a history of straight up fucking programming of people. Hollywood. The, the, the news, the deep state, the military industrial complex, they're all working together to control people in society. We talk about Operation Mockingbird, right, where the CIA planted people within their media, and now they can almost fucking control the media. And the, and the Pandora paper, if you just look deep down the rabbit hole, you'll see it. They're exposing themselves. And even though these techniques work, we got to make sure that we, 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 we talk about these things. Right. We let people know. We let them understand where it's coming from, where's the money from, because they want to swing you a certain way. Right. And so that's why we just went over who where the funding comes from and then went over who is Pierre Omidyar. So you understand why that's problematic. And now we're going to go into how the media the mainstream media has covered, right? Because the Guardian unleashed, they're the ones with the, the leaks mainly. They're the ones that unleashed a series of articles that you can find on the Guardian that you can read about what the Pandora Papers are. So we're going to go through what they say it is, and now you will understand why this is a big nothing. So uh, this is what they say from the Guardian. Pandora Papers, biggest leak ever. Biggest ever leak of offshore data exposes financial secrets of rich and powerful. Um, so you can see they, uh, they say millions of documents, real offshore deals and assets of more than a hundred billionaires, 30 world leaders and 300 public officials. And, uh, I'm just going to read the, the, a few things here. The secret deals and hidden assets of some of the world's richest and most powerful people have been revealed in the biggest trove of leaked offshore data in history. They expose offshore affairs of 35 world leaders, blah, 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 including presidents, prime minister and heads of state. They also shed a light, shine a light on the secret finances of more than 300 other public officials, such as government ministers, judges, mayors, and military generals in more than 90 countries. They disclose uh, about major donors to the conservative party, raising difficult questions for Boris Johnson. Uh, more than a hundred millionaires feature in the leaked data, as well as celebrities, rock stars, and business leaders. Many use shell companies to hold luxury items such as property and yachts, as well as incognito bank accounts. We literally know about this. Bernie Sanders ran on that uh, in 2016. Yeah. There is even art ranging from looted Cambodian antiquities to paintings by Picasso and murals by Banksy. The Pandora Papers reveal the inner workings of what is a shadow financial world, providing a rare window into the hidden operation of a global offshore economy that enables some of the world's richest people to hide their wealth and in some cases pay little or no tax. Literally, they take what we have been talking about in independent media, about the deep state, about a shadow government, right? About about the, the 1% predator class, it just literally coming together in a sort of, you know, for interest, right? And and that all of when we say it, they they excuse it as conspiracy. They say, Oh, you guys are being conspiratorial, you're calling it the deep state, the deep state isn't real. But then the Guardian pretty much comes out and says that same thing in their own, of course, establishment friendly words, and they act like it's some big revelation yeah. because that's that's what this is. They're, they're hijacking what a surface level examination of the things we have been uncovering in independent media 
for decades now, right? People have been doing this work and they kind of rebrand it as some sort of, oh, look what we're doing. And it's gross. And you can see that now. So um, this is the quick guide. What are the Pandora Papers for people who don't know what it is, right? They're the largest trove of leaked data exposing tax haven secrecy and history. They provide a rare window into the hidden world of offshore finance. Um, the files were leaked to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, which shared access with The Guardian, BBC, and other media outlets around the world. The BBC that continuously smears real journalists like Vanessa Vili on the uh, ser- fake Syria chemical attacks that were debunked. In total, the trove consists of 11.9 million files leaked from a total of 14 offshore service providers, totaling 2.94 terabytes of information. That makes it larger in volume than both the Panama Papers in 2016 and the Paradise Papers in 2017. True, two previous offshore leaks. Again, notice how they don't mention WikiLeaks at all. Um, yep. Where did the documents come from? The ICIJ, Washington, D.C.-based journalism nonprofit, is not identifying the source of the leaked documents, so they don't have to reveal their source. In order to facilitate a global investigation, the ICIJ gave remote access to the documents to journalists in 117 countries, including reporters at the Washington Post, Le Monde, El País, Sudetsch Zeitung, PBS Frontline, and the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. In the UK, the investigation has been led by The Guardian and BBC Panorama. So great, reliable, trustful sources, right, that have never lied about anything. (laughs) You know, I know it's it's all about, you know, the empire. It's all about nation building. It's all about and that's what they're doing right now. They're manufacturing consent. Uh, They're telling you who your enemy should be and who you have to look out for. And look at these people, these autocrats, these billionaires. They're raping the whole freaking, you know, world of all the resources when it's themselves. The people who are writing this information sitting behind the freaking glass going, look, we're the ones they don't want. Don't look at us. Look at them. But it works. It's effective. Because what do you hear people say? Oh, Putin's an autocrat. Oh, Putin's awful. You know, his picture was right on the front there, fam. But yeah. he's never mentioned in these fucking papers. It's ridiculous. He's mentioned, but briefly. Yeah. He's mentioned briefly because they don't briefly, have anything. But, but like they Kevin Bacon, anything. like yeah, nothing. Like six degrees to Kevin Bacon. He he knew this person who knew that person who took this money. It's like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. And the, and the whole kind of propping him up like he has more money than Bezos or fucking Soros is just beyond crazy. So um, then they go into explaining why do people move money offshore? Uh, and they do this, right? They say, oh, you know, tax, secrecy, regulation, blah, blah, blah. They don't want to take taxes. They don't want to, you know, do this. And then right next to it, they kind of say, they kind of okay it. They say, has everyone named in the Panama Papers done something wrong? No. Moving money offshore is not or in or of itself illegal, and there are legitimate reasons why some people do it. Not everyone named in the Pandora Papers is suspected of wrongdoing. That, okay, even though it's factually correct, like technically moving money offshore isn't illegal, that doesn't mean it's not wrong. Wrong, um, exactly. And they, and they, and they kind of you know, they kind of like, are like, well, there are multiple reasons. So they're kind of like, you know, kind of like putting themselves, um, protecting themselves, right. From really revealing anything nefarious about anybody. And like I said, notice how the vast majority of people involved in this are not any U S officials at all. It's all foreigners. And that, that is an important point. Yeah, fam, it's it's only wrong when they do it. When we do it, there could be a reason for it. They manufacture, right. they set the table so that when they do get caught, well, you know, we told you before, like, it's wrong when, when Putin's friends do it. But when we do it, there's a reason for why we do it. And right. it's just like the whole inside trading with Nancy Pelosi, right, with her husband buying Tesla stocks and whatnot right before they sign a contract and everything like right. that. It's technically not against the law. But it doesn't mean that it's not wrong. It's fucking right. wrong. Exactly. Um, another thing they pointed out that we knew is that South Dakota is the U.S. state with most trust identified in the Pandora Papers. Florida, Delaware, Texas, Nevada, Alaska. They kind of come in right after. And um, this is the part that I wanted to point out that this this uh, trust, right, this whole thing is catering mostly to non-U.S. citizens. So it's not us. Analysis by the 
independent consortium of investigative journalists linked the trust to individuals in 40 different countries outside of the U.S. 28 of the trusts appear to be linked to individuals or companies accused of misconduct overseas, according to the ICIJ and the Washington Post. Money laundering allegations uh, in South Dakota. Um, trust firms have acted are a Colombian textile. So then they go into talking about Colombia. They talk about the Dominican Republic. They talk about just different countries. And they're like, oh, this is where the majority of the corruption comes from. Not the United States. Yeah, right. And then, Pasta, they go into Putin. They Here have a, this whole thing about Putin, okay? And here it is, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, whom the U.S. suspects of having a secret fortune, does not appear in the files by name. But numerous close associates do, including his best friend from childhood, the late Peter Colbin, whom critics have called a wallet for Putin's own wealth, and a woman the Russian leader was allegedly once romantically involved with. None responded go. to invitations to comment. I, literally on NPR, they spent like an hour talking about Putin's lover, yeah. uh, Slebana, <laughs> which is my Russian Supposedly. name. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly. And, like, not even like tight claws that they know that he's his lover. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. They put him on the front cover. Like you said, yeah. like this is going to be about him and they found some juicy shit on Putin when they're like, he's not even mentioned at all in the files, but his friends Bruh. are, his lover <laughs> is. So let's let's make a story out of that. That's their whole fucking that's what they're centering this whole thing about on Boris Johnson, Putin and any other foreigner. They're not really talking about any American involved. And again, where are the documents when WikiLeaks yeah. releases documents? They release the literal documents for everybody to see what the intercept and these uh, people do at the ICIJ. They keep Very it. Thick. Yeah, and they hoard it, and they only release what they want people yep. to see. Exactly, um, only things that fit their narrative, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. So that's not a fucking leak. Don't call it that. It's not a real leak. A leak yeah. is just a leak with all the documents there, met left to the interpretation of the reader. Straight up documentation. That's a fucking leak. What they're doing is they're put spinning their own narratives. Um. So this is from the AP. The Kremlin hasn't seen anything extraordinary in the Pandora Papers revelations about Russia. Kremlin spokesperson, spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Monday, Peskov described the findings as um, a set of rather unfounded statements that raise questions whether the information can be trusted. I'm with this guy, Dmitry. If there are any serious publications that are based on something that cites something specific, we will look into them with interest. At this point, we don't see a reason to. Hello? There's nothing like specific about Putin at all. Like it's literally bullshit and it's just funny. And um, this is what the Guardian writes. This is what they lead their story with. Look, Pandora papers reveal hidden riches of Putin's inner circle. <laughs> that's like their main storyline, which is hilarious to me. But that's that's what they're leading with, right? And then the Guardian leads with a title. Oh, this is breaking news. Pandora Papers prove that the rich live by different rules. Well, no shit. Like, we know this. We know we know this. Thank you for confirming what we already knew. And this is what you wanted to mention, too, right? Because they do mention Jordan as well. Yes. Well, because they, they mentioned King Hussein in these Pandora papers, right? And yeah. his picture was actually on the, on the cover with one of the Putin people, whatnot. And it's just a signal. It's what the, you know exactly where these Pandora papers are coming from because they're letting people know. Jordan fully reopens the main crossing with Syria. So now Jordan, Lebanon, parts of Lebanon, they're like, listen, we can't deal with your regime change thing anymore. Uh, Assad is their leader. We need to start doing trading with them. We need to start opening borders. And that pisses off NATO, the military industrial complex, the intelligence. So they're like, okay, really? So they put you on notice by naming you in these papers. King Hussein, just the same name as his father. He's the son of, they've had tight allies with America. In fact, in that last year, when they had that money released in December, I think, when the Congress signed uh, all money for here, there, I think they were giving money to Jordan to build a wall to keep migrants out from Syria coming in from, you know, because of the whole war situation. Um, 
So they've always had their hand out. They've always been an ally. But in this particular situation, here comes the king going, listen, uh, enough with your bullshit. We have to start making relationships with our neighbors again. Assad is their leader. That is that. Boom. He's mentioned in the papers. Why? Specifically right. because he defied U.S. intelligence interest and the, and the empire. That's why. And that's what they fucking do. This is all about empire, these papers. These are all about letting you know who they're going after and who they don't like. That's how we should take it. Not as these people are being evil and taking all the resources, whatnot. They're trying to corral everybody to their future invasions and future regime change. Exactly. And there will be like they have to take some people into account, people that, you know, are publicly disliked, like Boris Johnson and, you know, and, 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 and Putin that are easily disliked by Americans. And they have to pretend like, look, see, we're exposing these people. They're so terrible. But like they never point the finger within like the, the confines of the empire. It's always somebody else. And they twist information and they only release the, the first layer of, of the information so you don't get to see everything else. So yeah. um yeah. that was that section, fam. 